Welcome back. We left Kala and Septima surrounded by darkness, moving through who knows what to who knows where, and our three adventurers about to move from the natural caverns into the man-made, hand-carved area. I do love it when a plan and a party comes together. Septima and Kala returned to full consciousness, feeling a cold, hard surface against their backs as they became aware they were lying down. Opening their eyes, even their dark vision couldn't make out their surroundings. Kala called out to Septima, her voice reverberating back as she realised she was in a long, enclosed stone chamber, unable to sit up. Alone. Septima, in a similar situation, could not hear any of Kala's words through the thick layers of stone. We shall leave them here for now, though not for too long. After all, the air is limited, and it's only a matter of time before there is nothing left to breathe. Gera, his torch brightly glowing and somewhat cramping Merrick's gloomstalker style, hung back whilst Alistair and Merrick snuck ahead to check for traps and scout things out. They detected no imminent danger, but came across a set of stone steps leading up to a platform on which were set two stone tombs. Alistair reached out with his dagger and lightly tapped on the lid of the nearest one, his die rolling so badly the sound was barely audible. He tried again, this time increasing the volume by a minuscule amount. Merrick, observing this, decided to kick the stone. Hard. His leather-booted foot made contact, causing three points of toe-stubbing damage. Septima, still trying to figure out what was going on, heard a dull thud by her side. She began to yell, and Gera and Merrick were able to pick up the sound, though couldn't make out the words. Alistair was still too engrossed in his gentle tapping, but as Gera moved up to push the lid, Alistair assisted. Septima heard the grinding sound of stone on stone, and felt a sudden rush of fresh air as the lid of the tomb she realised she was lying in was pushed aside. Gera, a hand resting on the hilt of Dawnbreaker, asked her who she was and what she was doing there. Meanwhile, Kala could feel it becoming harder and harder to breathe. She felt the edges of her vision growing even darker as she slipped into unconsciousness. Septima, realising that Kala was probably in the tomb beside her, urged the men to hurry. Gera and Alistair tried again to push the lid, but this one seemed heavier. Kala succeeded on a death save as her body fought to find some oxygen. The men had one last attempt. Thankfully, this time they succeeded, pushing the lid aside. Alistair was caught off guard by the sight of a beautiful half-orc woman lying there, her marigold yellow cloak bunched up around her. He reached in to try to revive her, his mind clouded by memories of another half-orc woman. Part orc, part drow. Mead. Lost in this recollection, he didn't notice as the fresh air revived her, and she woke with a start, surprised, to say the least, to find a half-elven man bending over her, the group took a moment to introduce themselves, the girls explaining that they had no idea how they'd ended up entombed. They'd been travelling to Silverhaven and ended up in some kind of tower from whence they had somehow been transported to this location. Septima took out the statuette of the Silver Spire, a building familiar to both Alistair and Gera. The guys explained that they were in the cave system just northwest of Rycroft, trying to find the source of some strange activity which had resulted in goblin incursions in the town. The party offered to escort Kala and Septima back to Rycroft, but upon learning that the pair were seeking Carrion Fastrider, a name familiar to the three men, and that they all wanted to find Sandrak, they decided they may as well continue on together. Safety in numbers and they would all be heading to Rycroft after exploring the cavern anyway, assuming they make it out alive. They continued north, stealthily making their way through the passageway, all but Kala failing to notice anything of note. She spotted a small figure slumped in an alcove. As she went to investigate it further, the group became aware of a number of strange creatures, small but vicious, coming out 
of the other alcoves towards them. Dretches. Only Septimus succumbed to the poison gas released as they closed in, the group managing to pick them off without sustaining too much damage. Merrick fired an arrow, missing the dretch he was aiming at and sending it thudding into a second slumped figure. His low investigation role caused a wave of guilt to sweep over him as he surmised he must have killed the creature, though upon learning it was a goblin, the guilt lessened somewhat. Kala deduced the other goblin appeared to have been bitten and clawed to death, its lungs corrupted by something similar to the gas, which she had been able to shrug off. The group chose not to linger, pressing on northwards. Once again, Alistair and Merrick took point, deciding to investigate the area to the right first. They discovered a small square pool of liquid. Within it, Alistair could make out a chest. Septima noticed some tiles engraved with strange symbols, ones she did not recognise but knew not to be any kind of language. Gera crossed over one of the marked tiles to take a closer look at a cracked area of floor. Merrick asked, what's the crack? Whilst Alistair commented that it seemed to be somewhat hairy. After seeing that it was no more than natural deterioration as a result of neglect, Gera returned to the group. As he stepped on the same marked tile a second time, it released a cloud of poison affecting both Gera and Merrick, who was also standing within range of the cloud. Kala found a small rock and threw it onto one of the other marked tiles. It rested there, nothing else happening. Gera approached using the handle of his glaive, Twilight's Call, to press on it. He realised that it required substantially more weight to trigger it. Alistair recalled the scroll found within the man bag of holding he had claimed as his own and given to Merrick. Taking it out, the two looked at it, thinking it was a cipher, and the marked tiles represented the letters S, W, H and O. They discussed whether it might be best to activate them all at the same time, or if there was some kind of order to it. Gera decided to step on the H. Nothing happened. Alistair then made his way carefully across to the O. As soon as he stepped onto it, both tiles released a cloud of poison gas. The group decided that the reward may not be worth the risk, and they could always return later. For now, they would continue on. Up ahead, the corridor split slightly, a set of steps leading up, and a narrow passage to the right going straight on. Alistair decided to go straight whilst Merrick crept up the steps. He could make out a relief carved into the wall on the small landing at the top of the steps, but could not make out what it depicted. He called Kala to come up and look, which she did, also not being able to make any sense of it. Kala decided Septima, being the most well-read, should come and look at it. She immediately recognised the barren landscape with dead, twisted trees and a tall, thin humanoid with unnaturally long limbs, out of proportion showing another realm or plane. She had seen images of the Fey realm in books and knew that other planes were often a warped version of the material one. The group, finding nothing else of interest or significance, went on after Alistair. The corridor briefly widened before splitting again. Merrick took the left side and Alistair the right. They found themselves in a large chamber, four pillars going floor to ceiling, a solid wall at the far end, and two sets of steps going up to a three-foot raised platform on either side. Seeing no danger, the others came in. Keller went to look more closely at the dead end whilst Merrick studied the closest pillar. He noticed an intricate pattern of leaves and flowers winding around the full length of the pillar. The centres of the flowers slightly raised in a domed half-sphere. Kala's examination of the wall revealed an almost imperceptible seam, indicating there may be some sort of door, though there was no obvious way to open it. Alistair hauled himself onto one of the platforms and looked more closely at the rear of the pillar. His sharp eye noticed that the centre of one of the flowers was not raised like the others, but rather concave, as if something small and round fitted in there. He called to the others to ask whether they had anything about the size of a marble. Gera recalled the wooden box found in Sandrak's tower with the word keys inscribed on it and the four small coloured pearls within. Kala made her way back to the entrance 
whilst the other four each took a bead and approached the rear of a pillar. They decided to try to insert them all at the same time. Septima took the red, Merrick the yellow, Gera the blue and Alistair the purple. As soon as the gems were inserted, the pillars reacted. Septima was zapped with lightning. Gera drained by necrotic energy and Alistair was flambéed by fire. Merrick, however, was fine. The group decided that there must be some sort of pattern and thought that perhaps the colours were significant since Merrick's pillar hadn't done anything. Septima gave the red pearl to Alistair and he slotted it into the fire pillar. Nothing happened. Septima took the blue and Gera the purple and put them into their respective pillars. With a loud grinding sound, the doorway in the solid wall opened up and the group continued on. Another corridor with two doorways, these each blocked by a closed door. Alistair crept forward, sensing no traps, and noted that the stone door was unlocked, but that there were noises coming from behind it, the sounds of something pacing. He quietly opened the door, spotting a large, muscular male humanoid. He was armed with a glaive, his bare feet ending in clawed toes. He wore a cloth skirt and armoured leg guards and gauntlets. He had a full beard comprised of tendrils with vicious-looking spikes, almost thorn-like, on them. Alistair raised his crossbow and took a shot. He hit, the creature turning to look at him and rushing over to hit him. Alistair slammed the door shut, yelling to the others that they were about to fight, and he was sorry. The door did not open. The creature could be heard pounding on it, but it seemed to be fruitless. Kala world-shaped into a giant spider, scuttling up and on to the ceiling. Gera moved closer to the door, and Alistair opened it again. The creature went for him, making two strikes and hitting him. Hard, injuring him so badly that he could not be healed. Alistair, going next, made a strike with his short sword, then disengaged and backed off, badly hurt. Gera tried to hit, noting that there was no handle to open the door from inside the room, and missing. He took an action surge to use Booming Blade, hitting this time. Merrick also hit with an arrow, and Kala, in spider form, bit into it, her fangs attempting to inject it with poison. Poison, which had no effect. She skittered back out of reach, or so she thought. Septima fired a magic missile into it, a second level giving her four blasts of force damage, all hitting their target, but not taking it down. The creature was next to go. The first strike at Geral was deflected by his casting of shield, but Kala took a hefty blow, realising that she wasn't as out of reach as she thought. Alistair shot at it, hitting again. Gera also hit with Dawnbreaker and Merrick with another arrow. Kala delivered another little bite, more of a nibble really, as she descended to the floor, realising that another hit would knock her out of her spider form and it wouldn't be a great idea to be on the ceiling when that happened. Septima blasted it with Firebolt, hitting it. The creature was enveloped in flame and it looked at her and grinned, the fire not damaging it at all. The party began to panic, having entered the fight with many not at full health and without full resources. Gera took another two strikes, incurring a wound that bled profusely and continuously. He delivered another blow with Dawnbreaker. Alistair shot once more, his crossbow bolt briefly pinning the creature to the wall before it blackened and crumbled to ash. Gera shut the door. Kala dropped her wild shape and cast Healing Word on Gera, his wound closing. Merrick gathered some of the ash and they all retreated back to the goblin camp to take a long rest. Merrick curled up in a bush and Alistair slept on the opposite side of the area. The three others grouped together. They took it in turns to keep watch, nothing happening. That is, until it was Septima's turn. Luckily for the others, she was the last to take watch. She found herself once again staring intently at the small tower statuette, feeling like she was being drawn into it. And this is where we will leave the group for now. Oh, I know you want to know what happens next. And so do they. You'll all find out. Eventually. <laughs>